already given you an overview of uh, the different ways of protecting non-EU GIs in the European Union. And Eva and I will now explain how the European Commission assesses applications for GI protection under bilateral agreements. Just for your information, the assessment of applications, of GI applications, is done by um, the European Commission, by the Directorate General for Agriculture, or DG Agri, and BYPO only assists the Commission in this assessment in the context of a capacity building program. So what are we going to look at in this presentation? First, as an introduction, I will briefly explain how you can find information about non-EU GI protected in the EU. So both those that have been registered via direct applications, as Monica just explained, and those which are protected under agreements, which are more interesting for you. And second, the main part of the presentation uh, will cover the different components of the summary specification. So the application for GI protection, which is submitted in the course of negotiations of a bilateral agreement. Okay, so first I will briefly show you how to find information about non-EU GI that are protected in the European Union. The European Union or the European Commission's main portal or database for information about GI is EM brochure. And on EM brochure, you will find detailed information about EU uh, GI, so PBO, protected uh, geographical indications and designations of origin. And this, would co this covers initial applications, applications for amendments and registrations. And on your brochure, you will also find information about non-EU GI that have been registered via direct applications. So under the EU system, the European Commission approves a so-called single document, which is a summary of the product specification. And this document will then be published in the EU's official journal. And on the Ambrosia, as you can see in the slideshow, you will find a link to that uh, single document. So here, you can see an excerpt, an extract of a single document, which is a summary of the product specification. Regarding non-EU GI that are protected under bilateral agreements, this situation is a bit different. So detailed information about um, this type of GI will not be available on EON brochure. As Monica already mentioned on the Commission's website, on the European Commission's website, you can access a list of non-EU GI protected under agreements. So here I've included the link again. Here if you click on down download, Yes, you will see, you will get, you will open this list and in this list you will see the names of the protected GI and you will also get a link to the relevant agreement. And as Monica has just explained, these GI will then be protected under the provisions of the respective agreement. So here you can see an excerpt of an agreement when you click on those links uh, and the provision on protection of GI. And also Monica already mentioned there will usually be an annex with a list of the names the GI covers protected both in the EU and in the third country. However, the um, summary specification that we will speak about today will not be published, so it will not be available uh, via this list. The search for information about GI and especially for non-EU GI will soon be facilitated by a new tool or database, GI View. I will not go into details about GI View because um, the EU IPO will provide more information on GI View once this portal goes online. I just wanted to say some words in order to give you an outlook. So GI View has been created in cooperation between the European Commission and um, the EYPO. It is currently still in development status, but should be launched this August. And the second launch is expected for November of this year with a private area for producer groups and country authorities. So some additional features which can be interesting for you. As to the scope, GI View will cover all GI from EM Brochure, so the EU portal that we have just seen, and also non-EU non GI uh, included in agreements. So here, as you can see on the bottom on the left of the screenshots, information both on non-EU GI registered via direct application, so EU register, and via agreements will be made available on GI View. And regarding non-EU GI protected via agreements, the you will find information on the name, on the product category, on the status of protection, and also again a link to the agreements. But as you can see, there will be no link 
to the summary specification or so-called single document. And this is also why in the next part of the presentation, the main part of the presentation on the summary specification, we have used some examples from bilateral applications, but we have anonymized them because these specifications are not uh, publicly available. So now let's move to the main parts of the presentation on the components of the summary specification. So these are the main elements that an application in the context of negotiations of a bilateral agreement has to contain. And Eva and I will explain what the requirements for each of these elements are and what the European Commission will check when they are assessing an application. So there are in total nine main headings. Uh, first, the name, so the name under which the product is marketed and which should be protected. As Monica just mentioned, what will be protected is the name. There's a section on the proof of protection in the country of origin because international GI always have to be protected already in the country of origin. The product category on the EU regulations, the applicant, so usually the group that is applying for the GI, the description of the product, so the description of the product as it is sold on the market, the, geograph the geographical area from which the product originates, the link, so the link between the specificity of the product and its geographical origin. This is considered to be the most important, most, most important part of a summary specification or a specification. And my colleague Eva from the European Commission will explain to you how to best demonstrate the existence of a link. The summary specification also has to contain information about controls, so checks whether the product specification is being complied with and, if applicable, on specific labeling rules. So the first heading in the summary specification is the name. The name to be registered is a word or a word combination that designates the product. So the name cannot be figurative, a figurative sign, or include a design or special fonts. It has to be really a word or combination of words. And also please note that the exact same name should be used throughout the document, so throughout the summary specification. And it should be placed in inverted commas. In principle, multiple names are possible if all of them are protected in the country of origin and if all of them meet the requirements we're discussing now. The name should be presented as it is used in the market, so in its original script, and if applicable, including all accents or upper and lower case. Should the name not be in Roman characters, the European Commission would also need a transcription. And the language used for the name should be a language used, or at least historically used, in the country or region of protection. And also please note that translations will not be part of the GI. So an English translation of the name would not be covered by the GI protection unless maybe it's a, it's a language used in the country of protection. And I have selected some examples for you for GIs protected under, names of GIs protected under bilateral agreements. So from Australia, you can see a quite uh, straightforward name, just, just a simple name. From Switzerland, you can see an example for multiple names. From Japan, you have an example for a transcription from the Japanese to the Roman alphabet. And from South Africa, you have an example for both multiple names and um, different languages used. And here again, I've included the link to the list that Monica has also um, already provided, because here, of course, you can find more examples of names of GI protected by bilateral agreements. Okay, the second heading in the summer specification is the proof of protection in the country of origin. So non-EU GI always already have to be protected in the country of origin. And the application has to provide information on the legal basis for protection in, in, the, in your respective country. And here it's important to indicate both the date of protection and the legal instrument and official citation. And actually, it does not, the GI does not necessarily have to be protected under the GI system of your country, because maybe some of your countries have not yet implemented a, a GI system, but it could, for example, also be a trademark system or a governmental order. Some countries actually have a public database where they give an overview of protected GI and also provide some more elements from the project specifications or some information about the product. And if uh, in your country 
you have such a database, providing a link to it would be, could be helpful for the assessment of the European Commission. And here again, please, um, the, the proof of protection in the country of origin should always show that the protection is granted to the word for which protection is applied for. So not, for example, to a design or to a figurative element. Then the third heading in the summary specification is the product category under EU regulations. So the product um, should fall under one of the product categories listed in different EU legal instruments. And the European Commission and their assessment will check whether this product to which the name uh, extends refers, uh, falls under one of the product categories listed in these annexes of the regulations mentioned here or of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. And please um, no, always take into account that um, currently the EU does, is not competent for non-agricultural GI. So a GI could not cover um, products such as handicraft goods or stones. Monica has earlier mentioned the, the kind of products we are looking at, not foods and foodstuffs, agricultural products, wines, spirits, etc., but not, no non-agricultural products. Here you can see an example for coffee. So in case of coffee, uh, the product category would be would correspond to class 1.8 other products listed in the annex 1 to the treaty. So if you consult text of the treaty on the functioning of the EU in annex 1, you can see that coffee is listed. So this type of product would be um, acceptable. Then the fourth heading of the summary specification is the applicant. Just to recall, GIs grant collective rights. So in principle, any operator whose product or production complies with the product specification should be able to use the GI. This means that usually applicants will be groups of producers, for example, farmers or processors. And to commission the information that um, you need to provide in your application is information on the name, address and contact detail, contact data of the applicant. And here, please take into account that the institutions have to comply with rules on data protection. So it's always preferable to use an impersonal email address. And if that is not possible, you would have to give express permission to e store and publicize this personal data. In case the applicant should be but for example, a single company, it's important to explain that this applicant has been accepted under the relevant national rules, because under the EU system, normally there could be some issues. The fifth heading of the summary specification is the description of the product. This is um, an important part, specification. So the application has to contain a description of the final product to which the name applies. So the final product as it is available on the market and as it will also be exported to the EU market. This description has to be concise and as technical as possible. So usually it would contain information on the type of the product and depending on the type of the product also on the shape, weight, size, color, taste, and physical and or chemical pro properties. As regards the level of detail, for example, if you want to refer to the um, sugar content or sweetness, it's preferable to indicate the Briggs level, which is a more technical way of describing the sweetness. And equally, if relevant, you can indicate the, per the percentage of acidity. It's very important to highlight the specificity of the product. So how is this particular product different from other products of the same category? And this is actually also an important element for the section on the link. So the link between the specificity of the product and its geographical origin. So my colleague Eva will explain this in a bit. As regards, proce as regards processed products, uh, so for example, some processed meat products, such as sausages, there should also be information on the proportion of the raw materials. And please always focus on the final product, product uh, because these product descriptions should of course also allow control authorities to identify counterfeits or to identify products that do not comply with the product specification. Maybe a relevant example for you could be coffee. So in case of coffee, it should always be clear whether the GI should only cover, for example, green coffee beans or also roasted coffee. And in that case, um, in case it should also cover roasted coffee, please clarify whether roasting only takes place in, the third, in your country or whether it should also 
be done in the EU. And in that case, it would have to be confirmed that GI controls would also be applicable to roasters located in the EU. And here I've uh, selected an example from a non-EU GI protected via an agreement. And as announced earlier, these examples have been anonymized. So the product at stake here was an orange. And as you can see in the text, the, um, the description contains information on the product type, and it contains quite detailed information on the physical appearance of the product, on the aroma of fragrance, on the shape, on the consistency, on the taste, and also it contains some measurements, provides some measurements. So here in this case, um, this description was considered technical and precise enough to identify the product on the market. Okay, the sixth heading in the uh, summary specification is the geographical area. So the area from which the product originates. Usually this will be a delimited region within a country. There are some cases where the GI will cover the whole country, but in this case, uh, the commission would need a specific justification. And the limitation of the delimitation of the geographical area, area should be clear and not too vague. So a good way of describing the geographical area is usually um, by referring to administrative or political boundaries. So for example, to, to specific municipalities. And here in the example, again, it's an anonymized example. You can see that um, the application referred to a province, to a city, to a delimitation by a river, and also to coordinates. So the geographical area was identified both in administrative and geographical terms. So now uh, my colleague Eva will explain the link, the most important element of the, um, of the summary specification. So I'm going to stop sharing my presentation. So we connect back uh, with Brussels to, to talk about the crucial part of the summary specification, that is uh, the link. As I said, this is the the most important part and and just here yeah here we start here uh, so it's 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 the most important it's essential part of the single document and it really this part shows if it's uh, really a, a gi a geographical indication and uh, the link requires logical reasoning it means that this part should show how the qualities uh, of the product are due to the characteristics of the geographical area. And also, it, it's very important that objective arguments are um, provided, uh, showing that the, the geographical area and the, the link and the product are really linked together. So uh, this is a slide that you, you saw already um, with Monica. And, but I just wanted to, to to present it again because I uh, wanted to, to highlight uh, that um, the link uh, description constitutes also essential part of the GI definition in uh, TRIPS uh, as it says that um, it's, a, it's a GI where a given quality, reputation or other characteristics of the good is essentially attributable to its geographical origin. So as you uh, see, there are three main steps to describe the link. Uh, so these are three steps to be followed when the dossier is prepared, and also three steps uh, that are used uh, in the assessment of the file. So the first steps is to uh, identify and describe the characteristics of the defined geographical area. In other words, what makes this area special? And the second step is to identify and describe the characteristics of the product. In other words, what makes this product special compared to similar products? And uh, uh, the last step is uh, to link two previous steps. That is to show how the features of the product are produced by the factors present in the area. A diagram here. Uh, so uh, what we need, it's a geographical area. Uh, you can see a map of a, of a certain region. And 
we need then a specific, we have a specific product coming from this uh, region and we should, to, in the application, we should show how these two, the region, the region and the product are linked together. So as, as uh, Monica mentioned, an example of, uh, of honey, uh, so we, we should first indicate what is specific in the island uh, or other region where the honey comes from. I don't know, or for example, different ecosystems or uh, plants or specific soil. And then we should describe characteristics of this particular honey, like specific pollen spectra or um, the uh, high freshness of, of the honey. And the, the last step is to show the link that the specificity of the honey is due to geographical origin. Now I will explain some detail, details of these three steps. So first was geographical area. You remember there was a, a map of the diagram. So here for this part, uh, in this section, what is needed, it's description of specificity of this area. Uh, but what only characteristics that have influence on the product are needed. So not everything that we know about the, the, the area, but the important characteristics that influence the product. Uh, what, what's more, it's, we need the description to be clear and precise and uh, it may refer to, just to give a few examples, to uh, soil condition, to climate characteristics, for example, temperature, sunshine exposure, high humidity, heavy rainfall, etc. Or it can end, it can refer to specific know-how of local producers, specific skills, method of production, etc. You can see uh, here in this uh, diagram uh, that geographical area description may refer to natural factors and or human factors. I will give now uh, some practical examples of descriptions that uh, we received and uh, uh, cases that we um, considered sufficient or not sufficient. Uh, here we have a um, sentence saying that the texture of uh, fruit, certain fruit, well, we don't have the name, is influenced by climate condition of certain island, particularly sunlight intensity and the exposure duration. But in this example, we don't really know what is duration of, of uh, solar radiation. We don't know how the exposure, ex exposure looks like. So we consider that this is not sufficient uh, description of the natural factors. In this example, we have information on uh, elevation or uh, on uh, yearly rainfall, on the temperature, on the soils. So here the particular, particular natural factors are specified. So in this case, we will consider description as sufficient. As for human factors, uh, we have, um, we received a sentence saying that factor of uh, local uh, society that is skillful in cultivation and climate prediction have fostered the cultivation. But still, this sentence doesn't uh, say what are those skills. It remains unclear, so this is not sufficient. Uh, second uh, sentence says, human factor also plays important role in production and post-harvest. And again, it's even more general than the previous one. So. Uh, again, we, we consider it's, it's, it would be not, sufficient, not sufficiently described. Another example of description of human factors, it's, it's here. And uh, here we got uh, information that um, there is um, 
that the producers have made the, the efforts and they aim to clean and um, excellent quality rice straw to give to be given to their cattle and the producers adopt a small scale farming style etc so here we have it described we have a precision of local practice and uh, we know what are the part particular skills that produce this particular beef so in this case uh, we would consider that this is sufficiently described uh, the second step in the link description as i uh, mentioned before is um, presenting the specificity of the product so this section should include description of what makes products special in comparison with other products but again only features of the product that have a relation to the geographical area should be described uh, as uh, francisca mentioned we have a part of product description where um, larger description of the product should be provided and where technical details of for example bricks content should be provided here in the link part uh, what we normally are looking for is to get information what is specific so for example if we have particularly sweet onion then the bricks content should be indicated under product description but then under the link part and more precisely specificity of the product we would like to 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 receive information that this onion is particularly sweet and the proof i mean in terms of indication of minimum uh, bricks level is given in in the product description again description should be clear and precise and it may refer as i said to to specific uh, characteristics about like uh, tastes sweet taste or specific shape size aroma etc now just to give uh, examples of descriptions uh, this one is um, says alcoholic beverage is produced by distillation using wash produced with naturally filtered limestone water obtained from the limestone water basins and surely this it's rather this, this description rather describes how it is produced the product is produced and surely this description this this method of production gives the product specific characteristics but here we don't we don't have uh, these characteristics identified so still we we don't know what is so um, specific in in the product and this will be considered as not sufficient uh, another example also about, about alcoholic beverage is uh, when it, it the, the application the uh, summary specification says that it's renowned for its flavorful character and smoothness and a distinctive sugar cane sweetness on the aroma so in this particular example we know what are product product qualities we see the clear description of specificity of the product the product may also enjoy reputation and if it's the case it, it should be described uh, in link part and what is important about the reputation that it should show the script it should show that the product is marked under the name that the reputation refers to the name so the the, the possible examples should refer to the name as it was submitted second thing is that this reputation should be attributable to the geographical area because we talk about geographical indications so this is uh, important uh, link part and it should be reputation of today i mean recent times not only historical references 
but uh, some kind of um, proof that refers to uh, to recent times. Uh, of course, historical references could be helpful to understand uh, the history of the, the GI, but these are not crucial information, so um, they can be included into the description, but they should be uh, summarized and um, and put after the info, the most import, uh, import, important uh, information. What can be used as a proof of reputation? This could be uh, there could be references to to prices, uh, to books dedicated to the product. Uh, also references in the cooking literature, media, etc., and even celebrations of the product if for example we have uh, there is a certain uh, lemon festival that gathered uh, hundreds of um, participants and that is celebrated already for many years this could be also indicator and a proof of uh, reputation and uh, now uh, some examples of uh, reputation so uh, here we um, we have a description that indicates at the end that um, as a result, a certain beef has received numerous awards, including the honorary award at the National Beef Carcass Exhibition for six times. So this is a reference to a specific um, award in national competition and in addition that was received for six times. This is certainly an indi indication of, of reputation. Another example about pepper that has hold a long history for the living of the local community. Uh, the, first, the first culture which began around the 19th century. So in this example we don't have any proof of current reputation so this description will not be considered as uh, sufficient. The last step of description of link part it's a description of causal interaction. So it means in practice as I explained uh, before this is how the features of the area such as soil, climate, local skills, gives, give its specificity to the product as compared to other products. So we, we can have an example like uh, this one. Uh, here we can see that the natural factors are very well described. We have indication of average temperature, of uh, um, annual precipitation, uh, sunshine duration, yes, this is very well described, but then we, we, we receive information that these climate characteristics are conducive to the growth of orange and ensure the excellent quality of orange. Well, this is not exact the description of the causal, causal interaction between um, geographical area and specificity of the product because we don't really know from this description how the climate influence the characteristics and which are the specific, character, the specific characteristics so this is uh, not a good example of description of uh, correlation uh, between geographical area and the product. Another example uh, we see here, and in this one, we see immediately that uh, high level of solar radiation uh, makes the orange um, particularly sweet. Uh, it has high level of sugar and inf influence intensive orange color. We know later the, from the reading of this uh, paragraph uh, that uh, precipitations give uh, the orange its juicy texture. So here we see what uh, the link, uh, that uh, this is how it's um, a description that shows clearly the, the interaction uh, 
um, between the area and, and the product. So just to, to summarize, uh, I will show again the diagram. Check if you remember uh, what makes a GI. Uh, so first, geographical area, second, specific product, and the link between one and two. Geographical area, as I said, this could be um, this could be natural factors or human factors, and then we have specific product, and we need at the end description between two of them, and as a consequence, we have a geographical indication. So that would be all from my side. Thank you, and I give back the floor to Francisca. The eighth heading of the summary specification is on controls. So the application needs to contain information on the control bodies or authorities which are responsible for checking the respect of the product specification. And please take into account that controls should not be performed by the applicant or the producers themselves, but by an independent body. So controls should be done by a governmental body or by a certified control body. As to public bodies, uh, those are usually government departments, for example, ministries, agencies, and regional authorities. And it should be clear that these bodies do direct controls. Controls by private control bodies can, are acceptable, but under a number of conditions. And here you see the conditions that private control control bodies must be must comply with in order to be acceptable. So these private control bodies must be accredited according to a specific ISO standard. And they must be accredited by a national accreditation body outside the union, either in accordance with a specific regulation or when that body is a signatory of a multilateral recognition arrangement under the International Accreditation Forum. And the accreditation certificate must include the name of the certification body, the name of the standard, the ISO standard, the products concerned and the specific quality scheme, and the name of the third country. And under the last heading of the, um, of the, summary, of the summary specification, specific labeling rules should be indicated. So just to be clear, this does not concern mandatory rules under national legislation, but specific rules uh, imposed specifically on this product as it is, will be sold on the EU market. So typical examples would be the use on a specific logo, trademark logo, which is compulsory on the label or specific mentions. And um, it's important to avoid including references to national legislation or labouring rules under this heading. So if you consider that such national rules are relevant for labelling in the EU, you could, for example, explain their content in the, in the application, but uh, do not refer to, this, to these laws or rules um, directly. Okay. Just to show you some typical examples. So some a typical example would be the reproduction of a logo. Here I've used an example from a direct application. So don't be confused, but I wanted to show you the logo. And another example could be a specific classification depending on aging. So here, for example, cask age, specific special reserve or grand special reserve. Okay, to conclude, I have uh, just some suggestions and remarks, and uh, I would encourage you to take them into account when you prepare an application or a summary specification. So in general, again, references to laws and regulations of your, your country should be avoided in the sum summary specification. Also, non-relevant material should be avoided. So for example, um, a detailed description of historical facts in the section on the link or irrelevant uh, labeling rules should, should not be mentioned because the summary specification should be concise and focus on the essential. And the summary specification should also be self-explaining, so understanding it should not be dependent on, some, on consulting some external sources. 
so ex so references to external documents and websites should be avoided in the summary specification. And also in general, please be cautious with rules on post-production, for example, restrictions on bottling or packaging, because there could potentially be a conflict um, with the EU's internal market rules. Now I've just added some useful links for you. Again, here the link to the European Commission's website. Uh, Monica has already included it in her presentation. Here you can find general information on the EU's quality schemes, uh, links to the relevant regulations, and also, of course, the list of, um, of GI accepted, protected under bilateral agreements. I've again included the link to eAmbrosia. Just to recall that the EU IPO will inform you once the new portal GIU will be online, and um, I assume you will also get this tutorial so that you know how to use it. In case you're looking for specific information on EU law or you want to consult the text of specific EU regulations, the main source is EUR Lex. And if you're interested, more interested in in the WIPO system, you can also consult their website.